Hi everyone, I'm Beth from the West Dallas Public Library and welcome to a brand new book in our Who HQ Summer Book Club where today we are reading Who Was Amelia Earhart. So before we get started, my quick reminder to please sign up for summer reading. You get a book just for signing up and there is a special um, prize at the end if you finish. Nothing big, but you do get something for finishing. So uh, head to our website, westdallaslibrary.org to sign up. All right, so who was Amelia Earhart? This is written by Kate Bame Jerome. Who was Amelia Earhart? Amelia Earhart was a pioneer. This doesn't mean she traveled west in a covered wagon or lived in a log cabin. It means she had a special spirit. She liked to be the first to do new things. In the 1920s, Amelia became a pilot. This was in a time when the airplane was still a new invention. Not many people knew how to fly one. It was even more unusual for a woman to fly planes. But Amelia set many flying records to prove that she was the best. Amelia helped start the airline business in the United States. She was also a writer, a speaker, and a fashion designer. But it all started from her love of flying. Amelia was a pioneer in another way too. She thought that women deserved to have the same rights as men. This was at a time when women were fighting for the right to vote. Many people still thought women were not strong enough or smart enough to have jobs outside the house. But Amelia's actions proved that bravery and brains were not for males only. Unfortunately, Amelia did not live to see old age. Just before her 40th birthday, she tried to set a new record. She wanted to be the first woman to fly all the way around the world. But Amelia and her plane went down somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. She was never seen again. Most people remember Amelia Earhart for the last event of her life. But this is a story about everything that came first. Chapter one, Young Amelia. Amelia Mary Earhart was born in her great, in her grandmother's house in Atchison, Kansas on July 24th, 1897. The house was high on a hill. It had 11 rooms. Maids and a cook worked there. Dinner was served on fine china. Amelia's mother's parents had a lot of money, but Amelia's father had trouble keeping a job. Edwin Earhart could barely make the payments on the family house in Kansas City. There were always money worries, but Amelia loved her parents, especially her handsome, funny father. When Amelia was seven, her father had enough money to take the family to see the World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri. 20 million people came to the 1904 World's Fair. 45 countries set up exhibits. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick blurb about the World's Fair. World's Fairs have been popular events throughout the history of the United States. In 1876, a centennial exposition was held in Philadelphia. It marked the 100th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. 10 years in the making, this World's Fair introduced people to many new things. One of the most popular exhibits showed a new machine called the typewriter. In 1893, a fair called the World's Columbian Exposition was held in Chicago. It was a grand event. One area at this fair was called the Midway Plaisance. 
The Midway featured popular entertainment. Here, the first Ferris wheel was introduced. It stood 260 feet tall and had 36 cars. It could hold more than, wow, okay, it could hold more than 2,000 people when full. Building the world of tomorrow was the motto of the World's Fair held in New York City in 1939. A popular exhibit at this fair was the Futurama. Visitors sat in moving chairs to get a glimpse of a city in the future. Modern buildings and huge highway systems wowed people of all ages. Another exhibit also got a lot of attention. Here, people start, stared at a new invention called the television. Many wondered what good it might be in the future. Mm. Um, so quick question. In a previous book, we had another big thing at a World's Fair that was built for a World's Fair. Do you remember what it was? It wasn't a summer book. It was uh, on the Let's Go on Vacation series. The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower was built for the World's Fair held in Paris. <clears throat> okay, onward. At the St. Louis Fair, there were Eskimo villages and Japanese gardens. Each nation and state showed something about its own culture. Amelia and her younger sister Muriel saw a big roller coaster at the fair. When she got back to Kansas City, Amelia tried to build one in her yard. Muriel, Amelia's uncle, and another friend helped. Wooden tracks ran from the top of a shed to the yard below. A little buggy rolled down the tracks. The tracks were greased with fat to make the buggy go faster. Smart. Always the bravest kid on the block, Amelia was the first to try out the roller coaster. She dragged the buggy to the top of the tracks and got on. Her sister held her feet. When Amelia, look, when Amelia gave the signal, Muriel let go. Amelia went down head first and crashed. Did this stop Amelia? Not at all. She and her friends made the slope of the tracks less steep. Then she got on the buggy again. This time she made a good run. She loved the speed and it was almost as if she were flying through the air. On a cold day in December, Amelia went sledding with her sister. Amelia wanted to go very fast. She took a running start, then she jumped on the sled lying head first on her stomach. The hill was icy. Amelia was gaining speed. Suddenly, there was trouble below. A horse-drawn wagon came out from a side street. It was directly in Amelia's path and Amelia couldn't stop. At the last second, Amelia ducked. She and her sled slid right, she and her sled slid right under the horse. Lucky. A moment later, Amelia was up and smiling. Her quick thinking had helped her avoid a bad accident. In the summer before eighth grade, Amelia went to another fair, the Iowa State Fair. Here, she saw her first airplane. Quick blurb, brothers in flights, Orville and Wilbur Wright never went to college, but they were good at building things. On December 17, 1903, in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, they made history. That was the day their airplane, the Wright Flyer, went 100 feet in the air. The Flyer was a rickety plane by today's standards. Its body was made of cloth stretched over a wood frame. It had one small engine and two propellers. Many thought it would crash on takeoff, but it didn't. It stayed in the air for 12 seconds. A short trip indeed, but this first flight changed history forever. Okay, so it was 1909, back to Amelia. It was 1909, only six years after Wilbur and Orville Wright had made their famous flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Surprisingly, Amelia did not think too much of the airplane. 
She was always adventurous, but her love of flying came much later. Amelia's teenage years were hard. Her father couldn't keep a job and the family split up. Amelia's mother took the girls to Chicago. They lived in a rooming house and Amelia went to Hyde Park High School. Amelia was a good student. She dreamed of going to a first rate college, but there wasn't enough money. However, Amelia's mother was able to send her to a good private school for girls. It was time for Amelia to start out on her own. Okay, we'll stop there for today. Uh, thank you for watching, for listening. And tomorrow will be chapter two and episode two of Who Was Amelia Earhart? Bye everyone.